So let's look at an unsymmetric load case where we have loads applied to both sides. Now I think they're going to need some naming. We're going to call this load 3W for reasons that will soon become clear. So we're going to call this load W. And first off, let's find the reactions. It's quite obvious we're going to have 4W upwards from here. We can start off with this, start to draw the bending moment diagram. We all can also tell there's going to be no horizontal reactions, of course. Now, as we move away from each support, there's going to be a linear increase in the bending moment diagram, tension on the top by convention, and obviously there's going to be tension on the top here. Now, it's going to go three times a larger magnitude. There we go. That's the bending moment diagram for the beam. Now, about the column, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have basically two conflicting forces. This load is going to be trying to bend the column to the right. This load is going to be trying to bend the column to the left. The load which is larger is going to basically win. So we're going to have the column being bent slightly to the left. And the magnitude is going to be 2W here. So this magnitude here will be 2W. There's no horizontal reaction, so there's nothing again to contribute to the bending moment at the base. The bending moment is going to be constant here. So now let's look at the shear force diagram. What we've got is two linearly increasing bending moment diagrams as we saw on either side of the, of the beam. So we're going to have two constant shear force diagrams on either side. And there's, there are conventions about which side to draw the shear force on, but different people will tell you different things and it's mainly just convention. Now, the important difference is when you do come to this support, you'll see that there's an external load, W, acting on one side, and this reaction force, 4W, acting on the other side. So because these are in opposite directions, it will change the direction of shear. That's something which is important to note. We'll have a shear force in the opposite direction. And the difference in magnitude here is 4W. So this shear force will be 3W, which is perfect because that brings us to the other side. That's our shear force diagram. And again, we had a constant bending moment in the column. So there's going to be no shear force in the column. So let's finally draw the deflected shape. And we can start from the bottom. It's an end caster. There's not going to be any rotation. We can start drawing up like this. Now, we have W here and 3W here. It's going to bend this way because we saw we have tension plotted on this side of the bending moment diagram. So we're going to see deflection like this to the top. There's going to be curvature downwards here, all the way to the point. If the point load was at some distance away from the end, then there would be a straight section here, but because it's right at the end, you see curvature all the way. And we've also got a bit less curvature. Um, it's going to be a 90 degrees to that column, but curvature caused by the W load on the other side. 